All right, everybody, we are recording this call. This is the Senior Solutions Friday agency call. We've got a good call lined up for you. Joe Johnson and Jimmy Hernandez uh, coming at you. And by request, we're gonna do we're gonna be doing a topic on uh, doing the three option worksheet. Okay, and the three option worksheet is that worksheet that we typically do in the home. Uh, you know, when we're making that in home presentation. And I was just uh, talking to an agent the other day, and and um, actually it was a uh, an agent that is just coming on board and we're just kind of fine tuning everything for the in-home presentation and was kind of struggling a little bit with you know how to fill out the three option worksheet and what numbers do you put in there and and that's really what Jimmy and I are going to kind of guide you with today so uh, hopefully you're on this call live you you know you may be catching this on a on a replay on YouTube uh, anyway, we're certainly glad uh, glad to have you on the on the call. Just a real quick announcement: if you need to order supplies, uh, as you know, we got the new agent starter kits, so it gives you everything that you need to go out in the field and be able to make that in-home uh, presentation properly and be able to make that transition into doing the the three option close. Jimmy, the one of the things that I've always found that I feel that really helps with closing in the home is being able to connect with your client and really building trust you know building that trust where they they feel like you're the person that they want to do business with and one of the things that i think is has really helped me is when we instituted and, and you know um really getting agents to use that pre-sale folder. Guys, here's what I tell you, man. Honestly, the pre-sale folder, it's not a gimmick. You know, um, it really, really works. It, it, part of the reason why it works is one, is that it's, it's building value for your clients. And it's also at the same time, it's building trust. And it also gives you, the agent, the ability to be able to, to ask questions and to be able to, I guess, kind of, you know, kind of analyze your client's situation without seeming like you're being nosy. You know what I mean? Um, like it, it's, a very, it's a very smooth way to be able to uh, do kind of a needs analysis for your clients by presenting and at the same time um, asking questions and we certainly have a lot of good training you know on the in-home presentation that's not you know we're, we're not going to be covering the entire in-home we're just specifically going to be covering um, the three option worksheet this is what it looks like we've got a new sheet that we um, have made up for 2021 so it says as you can see it says uh, at the top here it says 2021 uh, final expense benefits. What I'm going to do is obviously, like I mentioned, we're recording this call, and I'm going to get this out to uh, I'm going to get this out to everybody. I'll I'll uh, text you the uh, I'll text you the 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 YouTube video along with the the PDF file, and then what I'll ask is that if um, if you prefer to have it emailed, just contact me, and I can always email it to you if you need it. Otherwise. You, you know, with the text, you can just forward that to your, um, you know, you can forward that, you should be able to forward that PDF to your, uh, to your email and be able to, to have it, um, have it that way. All right. And if you are, uh, if you're, if you're checking us out and you are not subscribed to our channel yet, if you're, if you're watching this on a replay on YouTube, I certainly encourage you, uh, do us a favor, go ahead and, and subscribe. To the channel certainly it'll, it'll help us out get us more viewers it'll also when you subscribe it also allows you to go back and view the entire library of all the um all the previous videos um that we've done so let's go ahead and get into uh how we do the the three option worksheet and what jimmy and i are going to do is we're just going to kind of role play it i'll be the I'll be the agent and Jimmy will be the um, the client. The 
the big the big point I want to get across though is that in order to effectively use the three option worksheet, honestly, it's it's really 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 important that you don't skip any of the steps before. Okay, so it's really important that you that you utilize that that pre-sale folder and you kind of already go over with the client like what all the you know what the costs are you show them i'm going to show you this form right here let me fast forward to it let's see not that one right here um part of the part of the pre-sale folder is utilizing uh the form to the right here where you see the u.s government social security administration this is the future cost form so that's going to be part of your presentation and then so you know when the when it when an agent asks me well what number should i show the client if you just kind of follow the process um it makes it really really easy in order what to show them and what it will do it'll it'll help you it'll help you close people because here's what i can tell you it's it's human nature for people to procrastinate and not want to make a decision okay so just as an example if i were to ask jimmy hey uh jimmy out of curiosity you know um you know how much do you think you can afford for this program and i haven't even shown him any numbers yet you know what i mean so it's human nature for for the client to not really know because they haven't really thought about it they have no perspective in other words they don't even know what it cost okay it's like um and i was having this conversation with an agent the other day and we were debating not really debating i guess we were sharing our thoughts as you know the difference between payment closes and then doing the three option worksheet you know there are some agents that like to uh just ask the client uh jimmy you want to role play with me as an example sure. yeah so some agents like this technique, uh, I call it the payment close. Uh, Jimmy, if I were to be able to show you a program between $150 to $200 a month, uh, do you feel like that would fit into your budget? Okay. Ooh, uh, that's a little that's a little steep, Joe. Okay. So okay. So I get the thought process behind it, but the client doesn't even know what $200 a month equates to. Mm -hmm. you know, if two hundred dollars a month is a million dollars worth of coverage, that changes the whole perspective. Well, maybe yeah, maybe I could, you know, for a million dollars, maybe I could come up with two hundred dollars a month. You see what I'm saying? Well, and and the the purpose of the three option worksheet is, quite frankly, and no offense to car salesmen, but it's so we don't come off like a used car salesman. You know, you ever walk on a used car lot and the the guy comes out to greet you and says, you know, say, hey, you looking for a car? And and it doesn't even show you any cars. He just asks you, well, what kind of monthly payment can you afford? To me, it's kind of insulting. You know what I mean? How about I pick the car out and then you tell me how much it costs? How about we do it that way? So that's the kind of the whole thought process uh, behind the, um, the, you know, the, the three option close here. I'm hoping that makes sense. Hey, Joe, and you know what? Maybe I didn't answer what you were expecting, but, you know, I, I've had a lot of people in the beginning, I would ask, you know, what what was a, a figure that they're comfortable with, right? Because I did it wrong. And then the response I usually got was, well, well, how much is it going to, you know, how much coverage can I get? Or how much is it going to cost me? Or well, why don't you tell me? Like, it's this exactly what you just said. Um, you know, they they feel a little like you're trying to be, um, you know, sneaky or you know what I mean? Like you're trying to be a used car salesman. You're already trying you're getting ahead of the game. So, you know, do do yourself a favor and service the client, you know, do the presentation. And in the very end, you give them those three options, which Joe's about to share with you. Yeah, it, it, exactly. Exactly. I, I agree with you 100 percent. Um, one thing I want to do before I get into that, I just want to show you something real quick. Um, for today's example, I'm going to be utilizing on my phone, I'm going to be utilizing the phone app 
for Aetna, the CVS product. So let me go ahead, before I start doing the quotes, let me, um, actually, you know what? I'm not gonna open it up because I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how quickly you can do this. So as of right now, I do not even have the app um, opened up on my, on my phone. But what I wanted to show you was kind of a, I wanted to show you um, a screenshot. If you're using CVS Aetna, uh, when you, uh, if you open up the app, you may want to open up the app while we're doing this. Um, but if you open up the app, it's going to ask you if you want to upgrade to the new version. Go ahead and do that. And the reason why is because they just recently added in where you can, um, you can see how much the accidental death benefit rider is going to cost. The way Aetna had it before is that you could only quote the base plan and then only after you started the application would it then ask you if you wanted to add the accidental and then you could kind of upsell it. Now with the app, when you when you do the app on your phone, is it automatically um, gives you that gives you that number. Now, you kind of have to do the math in your head uh, to give the, the total quote, but at least it gives you the it gives you the figure there. So we're going to go back to here. I'm going to get this so I can write on the screen. I'm going to try that again. Let's see here. Pen. Let's use what color ink do we want to use, Jimmy? Uh, let's let's use blue. Blue. All right, we'll use blue. All right, we got blue. Okay. All right, guys. Now, one of the important things is is that I've got my, you know, I've gone through my, I've got, I've gone through my pre-sale folder. Uh, I've already asked Jimmy the health question, so it's really important that you that you ask your client the health questions. You do your pre-screening um, because you don't want to quote, a, give them a quote for a preferred plan. You find out. You know they're on kidney dialysis or you know they just had cancer uh six months ago and you know all you can offer them is a graded program so it's really important to do a very very good job of getting your field underwriting done first before you give them the quotes the other thing that's going to do is by doing the field underwriting it's really going to show your client and if you take your time with it and really dig into like all their medications and really do a thorough job of asking questions. It's honestly, it's really going to position yourself as being a, a true professional. Okay. So after we've done that and I'm ready to finally show Jimmy the figures, the, how I'm going to phrase this is Jimmy, what I'm going to do now is I'm just simply going to show you what, what most people are doing in your situation. And if I can find a program that fits your needs, but Jimmy, more importantly, I know this has got to fit your budget, but if I can find something that does fit your needs in your budget, all I'm going to do today is simply submit an application and see if I can't get you approved. Does that sound fair enough? Sure. Okay. Guys, we're. I want you to listen to the way I'm talking to Jimmy. Um you got to talk to your clients as if like you're talking to your best friend or your brother or your parents and they really have to uh well doing a good in-home presentation i'm telling you comes from your heart and it comes from knowing that you know that you're you're putting your clients needs and you're honestly you're doing what's best for your client and they'll feel that man they'll feed off of that if you just speak from your heart and you know um have conviction in what you're doing and that you really you know what you're trying to do is is put your clients in a good position where they can find a a, a great product so i kind of go through that and then i simply the next thing i'm going to say is jimmy uh but you know before i go over the options though um I want you to do me a favor and you've got to promise me something okay and that is jimmy just promise me is that if what i'm showing you um right now if it does not fit into your budget promise me that you'll let me know because we can make adjustments and what i can promise you is that we will find something that will fit into your budget 
Does that sound okay? That sounds fair. Okay. So guys, by by saying that one little statement, because what I what I don't want to do is what you don't want to have happen is that you don't want to give your clients figures. They look at it. They can't afford anything that you're showing. And because of embarrassment, they give you a smoke screen. Oh, well, this looks pretty good, Joe. Let me think about it or let me talk to my kids. That's all a smoke screen. I promise you what they're telling you is that they can't afford what you're showing them, but they're too embarrassed to tell you. It always comes down to the monthly budget. Don't think when you walk out of that house because the client says, well, this looks really good. Let me think about it. Give me a couple of days and, and uh, uh, you know, I'll call you in a couple of days and I'll let you know what I can go with. Dude, you never, <laughs> Jimmy, am I right? It's always about the money, Joe. You're never going to hear from that client again. They're not going to call you. You got it. You have to make the realization that you got, you got to close. You got one shot to close the deal. I, I don't care if it's, you know, uh, 12 bucks a month. You got to close it, you know, while you're there. You walk out, you've, you've, you've got nothing. All right. So let me, uh, let me see if my, okay. So first thing we're going to start with here. Is that we're going to start with option one, and that looks like my uh, my finger is working. We'll see if we can get this on here. All right. So Jimmy's already promised me that he's going to, you know, if it doesn't fit in his budget, he's going to let me know. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay out the three options. Okay. So Jimmy, the first thing I'm going to show you, and, and I'm simply as a state licensed agent, I'm just required to show you what the maximum coverage allowed is under this program. So based on your age, and Jimmy's in this scenario, he's, we'll just say 60, male, non-smoker, 65 years old. Jimmy, the maximum coverage that I could get you approved for would be $40,000. So I'm just going to write $40,000 right here. Got a little bit tough. And Jimmy, if you were to happen to pass away due to an accidental death, whether it be, um, you know, it could be a prescription drug overdose or car accident, doesn't matter, Jimmy, as long as the uh, death certificate says it was an accidental death, this coverage is actually going to double and it's going to pay out a total of $80,000. And it also includes a terminal illness rider as well. Jimmy, what that means is simply is that if you were to get diagnosed with a terminal illness, meaning that your life expectancy was less than 12 months, is that you could get up to 50% of the face amount before you passed away. Now I'm gonna call a little bit of a timeout. The timeout is that you need to know your programs. So in this case, I already know that I'm quoting the CVS Aetna. So depending on what carrier you're quoting, if you're quoting Mutual of Omaha, for example, or, or Transamerica, uh, know your program. If you're not sure what the details are, then you can just you can uh, you can be a little bit more vague. You could say something like, "Jimmy, this program also offers a terminal illness, which means if you were to get diagnosed with a terminal illness, meaning your life expectancy was less than 12 months, then the insurance company would allow you to receive a percentage of the death benefit before you actually passed away." So you see what I did? I pitched the benefit. I didn't give specifics. It was just a kind of a general thing because I don't, you know, I don't know the exact numbers. So you never want to give the exact numbers uh, certain percentages or, hey, you can get all the amount if you don't know what it is. So the other thing I just want to key back is, is that my wording on this on option number one is that I always quote based on their age, based on their health. I always quote what the maximum coverage is. If it's guaranteed issue, as an example, and I got to go through Gerber, it's 25k. Um, so I'm quoting 25,000 in this amount in this part. Jimmy's a healthy 65 year old male. He qualifies for 40,000 through CVS. I hope that's making sense. Now, option two, option two, I want to go back and I want to use the figures from the social security benefit form, okay, that I've already covered with them. So let me just scroll back, see if I got that here. 
Okay, I've got this right here. So we know Jimmy is right here. He's 65 years old. Um, and we know based on his life expectancy, he's going to, he should live to age 81. Average funeral costs are going to be 21,000. Okay. So that's what I'm going to fill in for option number two. So Jimmy, option number two, I'm simply going to show you, um, is what I, I'll reflect back. I have the form right here at my fingertips. Jimmy, option number two is going to be based on social security as based on your age at 65 average life expectancy of, of 81 funeral costs could be as much as 21,000. So I'm not going to make a big deal about it. I'm just going to um, put in the 21,000 mark here. So I'm going to put in 21,000 for natural passing. And Jimmy, if it were due to an accident, the benefit is going to double. So that would be 42,000. And then obviously this still includes the terminal illness. And then uh, Jimmy, lastly, option number three, uh, I'm going to show you what average funeral costs are today. And guys, how I'm going to come up with that number is just based on Jimmy and Jimmy and and my uh, conversation earlier when I was going to the pre-sale folder and we're going through everything. In part of that conversation, I'm usually going to ask my client. Um, if they're aware of what average funeral costs are in their area. You know, um, as an example, I during the sale and going through everything and I'm going over the sheets that show what average funeral costs are, I'm gonna ask Jimmy, Jimmy, out of curiosity, are, are you familiar or, or do you have an idea of what, um, for traditional burial, what average funeral costs are uh, in the San Antonio area? Yeah, about 12,000, that includes the plot. 12 grand would cover everything, perfect. I'm gonna use his number. Whatever he tells me, if he says, hey, I just buried my brother, we got everything done for 7,500 bucks. That's the number I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use his number. He tells me it's 12 grand, I'm gonna use 12 grand. So Jimmy, we're gonna work, uh, option three is I'm simply gonna show you what, what today's costs are. Uh, so based on today's cost, we know that the average funeral cost is $12,000. And then that would cover you for $24,000 of accidental passing. And of course, it has the uh, terminal illness. Now, let me show you what you would actually need to set aside to uh, fund these programs. Now, here, I'm doing this on the fly, guys. So I'm going to open up my, my, uh, my Aetna. I'm going to put in, this is how long it takes. Agents are so worried about, oh, it takes so long to do it on your, you know, your phone. Here, you guys can time me. I'm starting it from scratch. I just opened it up. So five, six, five. I got to put in my zip code. I got to put in my age. 65. 65 male. Effective date is today. I'm going to select the final expense Ascendo product. Let's see here. Uh, let's send, uh, let me go back. I think I did something wrong. 60565. I'm going to put in the date of birth. 7 55 male. Sendo. Okay, here we go. So, Jimmy, for the maximum benefit for the 40000 now, guys, when you open it up on your app, um, like I said, it's going to give you the base amount, and then it's going to add here. Let me just show you here again so you can see what I'm talking about. So it's giving me the base amount, the $222, and then the $16.80. I'm just going to kind of, I'm going to do that in my head and then just kind of round it um, to the nearest dollar. So Jimmy, for option number one, for the uh, $40,000 and $80,000 worth of accidental, you would simply need to set aside 
$239. Again, I kind of rounded that, guys. Uh, and then, Jimmy, uh, for the $21,000 for option number two, you would need to set aside $172. And option number three, you would need to set aside $74. So, Jim, you tell me which of these work best for you. Oh, I'd say uh, option number two, Joe. Option two, the uh, 172, that fits comfortably in your budget? Mm -hmm. Except, okay. hey, Joe, I, I'm running it on my end. I'm looking at uh, option number two being at one about 125. Oh, maybe I did. Um, hang on one second. Well, let's just here. Let me let me close my app out and let me start over. You did non-tobacco, right? Yeah, but let me. I I I just closed the app out, so let me open it back up. Twenty-one thousand. Uh, let's see, non-tobacco. Yeah, you know what I? Okay, yeah. So I know what I did. I used the. Uh, I quoted the standard, not the preferred. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it should be one twenty-six. Is that what you come up with? Yep. Yeah, I looked at the wrong. I looked at the wrong line on my. Uh, thanks for catching that. So one. 26. Okay. So uh, even though I made a mistake, you kind of understand the flow. I give Jimmy the three options like this and then simply ask the question, Jimmy, which of these works best for you? I, I like the one in the middle, Joe. Okay, great. So 126. Once he says he likes the one in the middle, I'm going to just immediately go back and start filling in the rest of my application. And one of the first things I'm going to do is say, Jimmy, and um, who would you like the benefit to go to? Oh, my wife. Your wife. Okay. So you want it your wife as the beneficiary. And then what if your wife were to um, pre-decease or let's say, God forbid, you guys died together in a car crash, who would you want the second beneficiary to be? My daughter, Elena. Okay, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna get the beneficiary amount, and then Jimmy, we're gonna get that 126. We're gonna get that coordinated with your Social Security. Um, do you? Are you? Uh, uh, when do you get your exactly get your Social Security? What time of the month? Well, I get it on the on the second Wednesday of the month. Second Wednesday of the month. Okay, great. And then what I'm gonna do, guys? I'm gonna look at my calendar. I'm gonna look at see where we are. Jimmy, we're going to set this up so your first premium payment's not going to come out until, you know, this. I'm just from there. I'm just going to assume the cell, and I'm going to have my my laptop or my tablet open, and I'm going to be going right into the the. Uh, uh, more than likely, I'm doing a, a digital app. If I'm doing a paper app, I'll have the paper app. Uh, but more than likely, I know most of you are doing uh, electronic applications. Just get right into the application and you know start start doing your application and then jimmy if you could it's kind of getting off subject a little bit but maybe you could touch on very briefly about how how you are how you're able to uh, get the clients banking information without it being like a big deal because i know a lot of agents sometimes Oh, I, you know, I did the whole app. I gave them the quote. They wanted to do it, but then they wouldn't give me my banking information or give me the banking information. Um, 
And I know you're really good at that. I'm, I'm going to say, Joe, probably really and truly, this is a rookie issue uh, yeah. because a new agent just lacks the confidence and they're kind of already projecting that problem in their head, right? Um, yeah, it's very, true. very, very rare when I do an app that that even comes up anymore. But however, to help a new agent that might be having that problem, you know, it's kind of hard to teach this, but I mean, you just have to be confident and you mm -hmm. have to just let it flow naturally. Don't make it, don't pause and hesitate and, you know, look at them weird or, you know what I mean? Like you just keep doing your application. And when you get to that part, you just, you know, ask the questions and fill it out. But uh, let, let's just say, for example, you're doing a paper application because it's this is easier to do on paper. I actually wait for that to be the last thing that I do so that they're already comfortable filling out all of the paperwork. So I'm not asking that like immediately up front. I'm saving that for the end because by this time, I've already asked them health questions. I've asked them more information about their beneficiary. I've gone over the accelerated death benefit disclosures. So like they, they're, they're kind of like more relaxed. They, they, they feel uh, secure because they know that they're in the hands of a, of a professional, yeah. right? I didn't just jump straight to that banking information. So I kind of save it for the last thing to do. Now, when you're doing a, an electronic ap application, you just really aren't able to do it in that flow, right? You have to go with the flow of the app. But if you're in person with them, you're just sharing the screen with them. And again, it's just, it's not even an issue. It's just like, okay, this is the next part of it, you know? Exactly, um, yeah. As, a, yeah, as I, a, I'm with you on that. The CVS app too, the, the banking information, like you said, it's after you've already collected, you know, you've tightened up all the medical questions, you got their social security benefit, uh, and then it's just a matter of, uh, hey, Jimmy, um, who do you bank with? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, okay. okay. What's yeah. your, what's your, what's your, um, uh, are you going to have this come? Is it coming from a checking or savings? Checking. What's your routing number? What's your account number? You just make it so like it's not a big deal. And like what you said, I think it's a rookie mistake where agents are freaked out about asking the question and they're projecting that that fear onto their client. Mm -hmm. It's a total rookie mistake. All right, now, what, what do we do here, guys? Let's say we do the three option close and um, Jimmy doesn't pick an option. Now, here's what I'm gonna tell you. You do the three option close the way we're showing you here, the majority of the time, they're gonna pick an option or they're gonna come back and tell you, they can't afford it, uh, or they may even reveal what they what they can't afford. Um, but what I want to do now, because we have plenty of time, it's only uh, eleven o'clock here, a little bit after eleven, is um, is cover some of the the handling the objections, and I can cover on how you know I can do a couple, Jimmy. If you want to cover, you know how you would would handle maybe it a little bit different um but i still believe at the end of the day guys the to be a good closer is that it's got to come from a good place in your heart and if you just talk to people like they're real people um and not a sales guy you'll you'll close so many you know so many more deals so let's assume in this situation jimmy i do the three option close I lay out the three options and you can't afford any of them. Um, or maybe you tell me you want to think about it. Or do you just give me any, just give me any objection that you want. I'm going to come back and say, Jimmy, you tell me which of these works best for you. Well, Joe, you know, I appreciate you giving me these quotes. Um, I, I need to get with my son. You know, he's the one that really kind of helps me with all of my financial stuff. So let me go over this with him. And then I'll get back to you. Looks really good, though. Thank you. Awesome. I appreciate that. Jimmy, out of curiosity, does um, uh, with 30 days, would that give you enough time to go over everything with your son? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's plenty of time. Okay, perfect. The reason why I bring that up, Jimmy, is that um, 
today, honestly, is really just the application process is that you can't actually purchase this program even if you wanted to. The purpose of, of me coming and visiting with you today is really just to find a program that fits into your budget and actually see if I could get you approved. What I'd like to do is go ahead and move forward. Let me see if I can actually get you approved. Once you're approved, you have up to 30 days to make any changes on it. And then when the, uh, the paperwork actually comes in, you'll be able to review that with your son. Does that make sense? Yeah, but you know, okay. I, I'm I'm really not sure, you know, I'm not sure if I wanna spend that much money right now. Yeah, see, time out just for a second. I can already tell this is a payment issue, which I probably knew it was. And then, so I'm just gonna talk to Jimmy like a real person. Jimmy, let me ask you a question. In your heart of hearts, is this a program that you feel like that you need and want? Yes. Okay. Jimmy, I'm going to tell you, I've been doing this for a long, long time. And what I have found is that when people tell me they need to think about it or talk to their children, their intentions are good, but it usually comes down to one or two things. One is, is that they're really not interested. They don't want it. They don't feel like they need it or they really don't care. The second is, is that they're really the, the, what I'm showing them really doesn't fit into their budget properly. You tell me what, what's, the, what's your biggest concern here today? Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to stretch me out a little bit, Joe. I don't know if I, I'm comfortable, you know, spending $74 a month. Yeah, I was kind of getting that, that same feeling, Jimmy. Here's the best part about the program, Jimmy, is that at the end of the day, you're the one that controls the cost of the program, not me. You control what it is. Jimmy, you tell me, what could you afford comfortably that doesn't stretch you, not taking any food off the table, but you could set aside comfortably on a monthly basis, and I'll design you the best program around that figure? I'd say I, I want to spend a max of about $60. About $60. Okay. Let me show you what I can do. Okay. So from there, guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get back on my on my app here. Let me open it back up. So Jimmy says that he can afford um, $60, right? Mm-hmm. Here. There. So um, 10,000, by the way, 10,000 is $58 without the writer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and quote him the 10,000. Hey, Jimmy, what I can do for you today is let me get you approved. I can put you into a program and get you a $10,000 benefit and keep you just under that $60 mark. It'd be $58.19. Does that sound fair enough? Yeah, that sounds good, Joe. Okay, so that's one way of of closing. You first do the three option close. They they give you the rebuttal. They give you the I want to think about it. Here's what I'm going to tell you is that when they give you the I want to think about it or I need to talk to my kids or I need to go over my budget, it's all a smoke screen that they just can't afford it. So just cut to the chase and just, you know, get to the root of the of what the problem is. And it's the budget. The other way you could handle this, and when they say, ah, I want to, you know, or, or ah, this is more than I want to spend, or uh, let me think about it. You know, the other way you could handle it is let me, so Jimmy, let me, let me handle it a different way. I'm going to ask you again, which of these fits into your budget? And you're going to tell me, ah, I need to think about it. Jimmy, which of these programs do you feel uh would work for you the best uh i don't know joe i gotta think about it yeah i can appreciate that jimmy i gotta tell you i've been doing this for a long time and i'm kind of getting the feeling maybe that what i'm showing you is a little bit high for your budget is that is that correct um 
I don't know. I, I can afford it. I, I don't know if I want to pay that much. Got it. Let me ask you. Um, let me ask you this question, Jimmy. What did you expect a program like this to cost? I don't know. Maybe fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. Okay. So he gave me his number. His number is fifty bucks. He wants to spend fifty bucks a month. I'm going to customize a program for just under fifty dollars a month. That's how I'm going to do it. I'm not going to. I'm not going to walk out until I've exhausted all my options. Okay. Because, mm -hmm. dude, right, Jimmy? If it's if if it's not about the money, it's about the money, guys. It's always don't let these crazy smoke screens distract you from what the issue is. It's always about the money. Always. You know? Um, hey, Joe, I'm going to add some commentary here. <laughs> yeah, please do. What's key here and what you guys really need to do is go back and listen to this recording when, when Joe posted on, on YouTube and write down his rebuttals word for word because it's like he just said, it's always about the money, right? And as an agent, if you think about where do you spend most of your time uh, trying to make a sell? And, and, and I think everybody would agree, most of the time that we spend as agents is prospecting, okay? We're doing most of our, our hours during the week prospecting to get to this point where we're at with the client. So when you're finally there, and you get a rebuttal or you get some kind of hold back, you have to stay focused. You can't just walk away. You can't get excited. Don't, oh, I, I hear it all the time from new agents. Oh, well, they're going to call me back or, oh, they're going to talk to their son and, you know, we're going to get back together this week or they told me to follow up with them. Like, you know, the, the, the agent gets sidetracked, right? You stay focused. Uh, what Joe is saying that it's always about the money is is right, and you have to have the right tone when you make the rebuttal, right? So like Joe is talking very low, he's talking slow, and he's talking from his heart. And when you do it this way, they're not going to get defensive. They're going to open up and really, you know, like share with you the true the true reason. Does that make sense, Joe? Yeah, it does. And I, I agree with you, man. It got it. It's got to come from your heart. It's got to come from a, a good place and your clients will pick up whether or not you're sincere uh, or not. Listen, man, I just want to, you know, they, here's the thing. They sent the card in for the reason, for a reason. They went online. They did fill out a Facebook form, whatever, however it is they um, contacted you, whatever the form of solicitation was. They only filled that out is because they had a concern, okay? And at the end of the day, all I want to do is put them in a good program that I know that they can afford um, and that's going to serve them um, serve them well, um, for sure. But, you know, I just feel like the, the for me anyway, the three option close is the best way to do it. Uh, certainly, I think it's the... It's the less confrontational. It's the easiest way uh, for new agents to to learn um, to do this. Now, if you're doing uh, just a quickly transition, let me check our time real quick. I got a couple of minutes. Uh, we can end a couple of minutes early too. We don't need to take up the full hour. Um, the other thing is is that if you're if you're doing telesales, it's a little bit different. It's kind of hard to do a three option close over the over the telephone um so a lot of times what i do if i'm talking to a client over the phone as an example um you know i may just give them like two options as an example or if i'm going to try to do a payment close so as an example if i'm if we just use jimmy as an example i'm talking to jimmy over the phone we're closing them i've already answered all the health questions Hey Jimmy, let me uh, let me give you some figures here. Let me show you what uh, what's available, and then we'll see if we can't find a program that fits into your budget. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see here. So Jimmy, based on your age and health, the maximum coverage that we could get you would be forty thousand dollars of coverage. So that'd cover you forty thousand dollars of of natural passing. 
So it doesn't matter, um, you know, how you pass away, whether, uh, you know, it's heart attack, stroke, cancer, any type of natural passing. But would it would also include an additional benefit, an additional 40000 for accidental death. So if it were due to an accidental death, it'd actually pay out a total of $80,000 of coverage. And I would also talk about includes the terminal illness. Now, Jimmy, to get the maximum coverage, you would need to set aside um, $239. And then, Jimmy, the minimum amount, these programs actually go all the way down to $2,000. Let me just tell you what, what that would run you. And $14. So, Jimmy, the, the least amount of coverage that we could get you uh, would be $2,000, would be probably just barely enough to cover uh cremation costs so you tell me where in between 239 dollars and 14 dollars that you feel comfortable um uh, on a monthly basis well how much would a hundred dollars a month get you joe got it okay so there we go i'm engaging and now he's he's giving me some feedback so that's just one example of what you can do uh, to kind of give the client a range, you give them the maximum amount, the minimum amount, and then they kind of know, well, what would 100 bucks get me? Or they may come back and say, well, what would, how much would 20 grand be? And then you kind of go back and forth and you're just kind of narrowing down the, the, it's the same thing, but you're just kind of narrowing down um, the process. But at least I'm giving them some figures. You know, uh, I'm not asking them, you know, if I could find a program you know, for 200 a month, does that fit their budget? What I'm afraid is, is that on the phone, is that, you know, you start off at, you know, 200 a month, is that you're going to lose them. But if you're just simply telling them, hey, this is the maximum coverage, this is the minimum coverage, let's find something in between that's going to fit comfortable into your budget. Um, for me, anyway, for some of the sales that I've done recently, um, uh, you know, over the phone and, and working with some other agents. That's kind of a, uh, a technique that has, uh, that's working out um, pretty good. Same thing, whether you're selling in person or over the phone, you've got to build that trust. You have to, uh, you, you, if you're selling, if you're doing telesales, you've got to let your, you've got to do a really good job of letting your voice and how you speak and your 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 tonality your uh, uh uh you know the pitch of your voice the rhythm of your voice to to help you build trust with that client uh really really super super important yeah i, w I wanted to touch on something real quick um re you know really for new agents but even if you're a, a veteran agent you know, uh, we have a lot of carriers and uh, you might be asking yourself, well, how do I choose from, you know, one carrier to another, right? And, and you know, you want to you wanted look at a couple of things like, you know, for me as an agent is which one is going to be uh, a, a name brand recognizable to the client, that's important to me, right? Because it makes it easier uh, to close the sale if, if, if they recognize a company like Aetna or Mutual of Omaha, right? Uh, another thing too is, you know, the ease of writing the application. A lot of this depends on if you're doing this in person or if you're doing it over the phone, right? Um, and, you know, maybe you have horrible handwriting, so you have to do or you prefer to do EAP. So now you got to take that into consider consideration, you know, what's going to be the easiest for me to process this in a legible form, right? So you take those things into consideration and that should narrow down, you know, let's say a handful of carriers. And then the next part, which is really key, is the field underwriting, right? So when you're in the field and you go through the medical you know, uh, information with the client, you know, maybe you have in your bag, you know, three or four carriers, but based on their health, you know, you got to go with, you know, let's say carrier C, because that's going to give them the best coverage, right? 
So you have to be comfortable with this. Now, if you're a rookie, we have a um, um, a cheat sheet for common health issues, right? So all you have to do is look at the cheat sheet based on the illness or disease that that person has. You can see which carrier is going to give them the best coverage, and you know, and and the most competitive rate. And that's how you that's how you make your selection. And that's part of I'm going to say this three option quote. Because sometimes, and I'm going to take a, a different twist on this, Joe, right? Let, like, let's say sometimes you're in a house with a client and they just want Mutual of Omaha. Okay, great. Well, I'm going to use the three option quote and I'm going to write Mutual of Omaha in option number one. And maybe because of something they have in their, in their medical history, um, they're only going to qualify for graded, right? With Mutual. So I'm going to write the 40,000, or actually in graded, it's 20,000 natural passing they don't get the accidental death right and then you you give the quote and then you can say well you know option b is this other company that is also a brand name but they're going to give you level day one coverage and you get this and you get this and then the and the rate is better so you know just just kind of keep that in mind because sometimes people are stuck on a certain brand and and you'll know this if they say well, what about Mutual of Omaha or what about Aetna or what about, you know, whatever, because you show them the, the pre-sale folder and they see all the different logos and the different companies. Just know that they're not lighting up on your particular company. And uh, so, so you, I don't know if you want to kind of add to that, but I think that that's really important for new agents to understand that you could also use this to, to compare the different levels of coverage. It may be, for example, one one company might give them graded, and the second one they don't qualify for preferred, but maybe they have a standard coverage that's going to give them day one, and then they get the accidental death benefit, and they get the accelerated benefits, all that included, versus just going graded with with the other company. Um, so just kind of keep all of that in mind, and make sure you use your cheat sheet. And and and, and last thing is make sure you read the health questions. For the one that you're quoting to make sure that they're eligible so i'll turn that back over to you joe well that sounds good man just just to clarify make sure i think i'm understanding what you're saying too and it makes total sense is just for the agents to understand too is that if you're if your clients are stuck on a particular carrier but that carrier really isn't the best option you could actually use the two the 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 three option worksheet to show them the difference so as an example what jimmy was saying let's say option number one is mutual of omaha option number two is cvs just as an example and let's say let's say <laughs> hey jimmy let's say they have copd or let's say maybe they're um insulin dependent diabetic and they you know since age 40 as an example well you could still get them coverage with mutual but it's going to be um it's going to be it's going to be graded so just real quick as an example and then we'll end the call um this is the way you could use the same the same worksheet here i'll do it since i already have the cvs posted you want me to run the quote for for moo yeah yeah you run the one for moo i'll run and let's do it for uh 20 grand Okay, age 65, right? Yeah, we'll just use the same. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I used age 65. So for CVS, for I'm coming up with uh, $112 for 20,000 of coverage. And, and, gonna... and mutual graded 20,000 would be 128. 128 okay i kind of forgot how cheap mutual's graded product is <laughs> um mutual of omaha has a a great uh, you know if you ever need a client that you know has to go graded and they can fit in with mutual uh it's really good because it they they have the cheapest graded product available just keep in mind you're taking about a 40 percent hit in commission on their graded product since they revised it 
Um, so it's a it's a great product. It's really not that much difference, you know, between the two. But if I were showing a client, say, well, yeah, Mutual Omaha is a great is a great company, but because of when you're diagnosed, Jimmy, with your diabetes, with with Mutual Omaha, you'd actually be in a graded product, which means is that the full coverage doesn't kick in for two years. Uh, if you were to pass in the first two years, it's going to pay out 100% of your premiums plus 10% interest. You know the whole spiel. That would you need to set aside 128, or we could put you um, same day coverage with CVS, which is part of the uh, the Aetna Health Program. Uh, so it's an Aetna company, and that would run you uh, $112. You tell me which of these best is best for you. Mm-hmm. And then and the it, CBS it has day one coverage, or I have to wait two years. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I wasn't. I got off track with the role play. <laughs> it's it's same day coverage, Jimmy. You don't you don't have to wait um, two years. It's immediate coverage. Same day coverage it also includes a terminal illness rider um, as well for no extra charge. Yeah, yeah. I think I like that one. Okay, so that's just another way you can compare. Uh, you can use the three option close to show the client the same face amount. You could do 20, 20, 20, three different companies and then have them pick between which company they want to go with. That's just that's a, another another way. If the client already says if they you know, if you're if this would come in handy, I guess, as an example, Jimmy, if you're working with a client and they're adamant, they've already been shopping. They want $20,000 worth of coverage, okay? And you're going to show them, you know, if I walk into a house and and Jimmy says, listen, I've been, you know, I already know what I want. I need $20,000 worth of coverage. This is probably the way I would do it. I would do three different companies. I'd show Moo, CVS, and then I would do another, show another company um, on option number three, you know, based on their, their health scenario, and then have them pick, you know, pitch, pitch each company where you know uh, what the benefits are and have them pick between those three companies so that's certainly mm-hmm. another another option on how to use the three option worksheet so um with that we used up our once again we used up our our full hour so hopefully this content has been very very good i'm going to get this out to everybody and please if you need help over the weekend uh today or over the weekend if you need help putting cases together certainly give myself a call, give Jimmy a call. We'd be more than happy to uh, help you uh, put your deals together. Or if you need some one-on-one coaching uh, to work on your in-home presentation, certainly uh, get in touch with me. All right, Jimmy, good, uh, really good call today, man. I really appreciate your help and uh, all of your contributions. Well, thank you, Joe. Y'all have a great weekend. All right, my man. All right, everybody. God bless. Take care. Bye-bye.